In this video we are going to use this incredible invention that only cost $25 to get the parts for to take these incredible wide angle macro photos of live insects. But first I want to give you a bit of a background and also explain how this lens is built because you will learn some very interesting things about optics and how lenses are constructed overall. So this whole story began a few weeks ago when there was a discussion in my Discord server on how to build your own wide angle macro lens. A wide angle macro lens is very cool because you can take photos of insects up close like with a macro lens but you can also get a lot of the surroundings in the same photo giving a unique perspective that is impossible to get with a regular macro lens. There is only one wide angle macro lens for sale on the market and that is the Laowa 15mm and while it is a good wide angle macro lens it is uh, pretty hard to use because the lens is so big and wide uh, so it's very hard to get the lighting right because with a wide angle macro lens with a short focal length you need to be like this close to your subject to focus on it. You almost need to touch the insect with a lens to get a photo. So it's really hard because this lens is so big and wide so you will kind of push away the flower that the insect is sitting on. And also it's very hard to light the subject because the light should come from the front, right? But at the front is the lens. Uh, so it would be much nicer with a, like a thin, narrow wide angle macro lens. And you can construct your own wide angle macro lens using the same principle as the Laowa 15mm. You can take a super wide angle lens. Uh, I tried this. This is the uh, Samyang or in this case Volimex which is another brand that Samyang uses. 12mm fisheye lens. You can take a lens like this and then you can apply a little bit of extension tubes and you will get basically a wide angle macro lens. But the big problem here is that the wider a lens is, the shorter the focal length is, the less extension tubes you need to have uh, to reach uh, macro magnifications. And um, if you apply too much extension tubes, uh, sure, you will get the high magnification, but the problem is that the focusing point will be inside the lens, so we will not be able to focus on anything. So in order to get the focusing point just in the front of the lens to get around 0.5 to 1 time magnification you need to apply just like a few millimeters of extension and there are no extension tubes like this. But what you can do that I tried is to buy the lens for a DSLR, this is for Canon EF and then uh, buy a helicoid adapter that adapts it to Sony but at the same time you can actually twist and turn this adapter uh, to get a little bit of extension and that way you can actually use a lens like this as a wide angle macro lens. Anyways I tried that it was not a lot of fun because the magnification was not, was not that good and also um, it was so hard to use because it's so big and wide. So what we want is a thin, a narrow wide angle macro lens and I discussed this with Nick Sherlock on my discord server that I've seen some macro photographers use uh, CCTV lenses. These are basically extremely small, look how tiny it is, extremely small and very cheap lenses. This one cost five dollars including shipping on eBay. Uh, these are made for like surveillance systems and they are basically extremely wide fisheye lenses. So this is perfect right for wide angle uh, macro photography. The only problem is that these lenses are made for very small sensors. So this lens, uh, when used, will project an image a few centimeters behind it uh, in the air, which is very, very small. So if you were to put this on uh, a normal camera, you would get like a very, very small uh, image and it would not be very usable. So what we want to do is to magnify that image somehow. So if you could put a high magnification macro lens behind this to photograph uh, the plane where this lens projects this image, you will get it to cover a bigger sensor. And Nick Sherlock came with the brilliant idea to actually build upon his previous invention. So you might remember this guy, this is a 
$20 microscope objective uh, on a 3D printed adapter that Nick Sherlock made. Uh, I made a video about this earlier, you might have seen it. If we remove the hood on this microscope lens, this by the way gives four times magnification, so it's uh, a lot more powerful than most macro lenses. Uh, now we can see the lens itself. It is um, very small and we can also see there is some uh, threading here and uh, this uh, gave Nick Sherlock the idea that he could 3D print uh, an extension to this. Let me try to screw this on right so I don't uh, destroy the threading. And just like a couple of hours after Nick and me talked about this, he had already made like a prototype, he's <laughs> so quick. Anyways, now we extended uh, this tube a bit and uh, on this side we had threading to uh, mount this CCTV lens. And if I screw this in and I make sure to stop exactly at the point where uh, the image that is projected by this lens meets uh, the focusing point of, of this lens, then uh, this lens, the microscope lens, will photograph the image in the air from this lens and you will get a highly magnified wide angle macro image that covers a big sensor. It will not quite cover my full frame sensor here but it gets pretty close and definitely close enough to be usable. So this is what we're gonna play around with today. I'm gonna take this outside, I'm gonna put some kind of lighting rig on this because we need a lot of light, of course. And I'm gonna try to shoot some live insects with this and uh, see how that experience is. One thing that makes this lens very hard to use is that the image is actually upside down. And actually the image from your regular lens is also upside down in the camera, but it turns it to make it more convenient. But each time you add a new lens to the stack, it gets turned once again. And um, yeah, unfortunately there is no option uh, in my camera to flip the image, so I have to get used to shooting upside down and it's kind of hard. <laughs> So this lens setup barely covers APS-C, definitely does not cover full frame, it becomes like a circle in the middle of the frame. So now I actually switched to APS-C mode to make it easier to focus and to do the composition. So we have a daddy long leg spider here, let's see if we can capture it. It's really hard to focus, it's so hard to see what actually is in focus or not uh, with this setup and uh, focus peaking doesn't help that much and it feels like I'm kind of guessing and uh, since it is so hard to get the focus right I don't even think about composition so far, I just try to get some decent shots. Uh, I mean this is my first photo walk with this lens and uh, yeah, step one is to try to get some working photographs, study them at home and then uh, refine my approach until next time I go out. But I found that the easiest method to focus is to use focus magnification uh, so that I zoom in on the middle of the frame and then I just look here in the display and not in the viewfinder uh, because it's too confusing to look in the viewfinder because when I move the camera up the image goes down <laughs> the other way around it just feels so unnatural because the image is flipped so um, I find it easier to just 
see where I point the lens and point it at the insect and then look in the screen like this. Ah, damn, not in focus. See a stink bug here, let's try to capture it. Oh man, this is hard. I think I got maybe one decent shot, possibly. By the way, if you're wondering about my lighting setup, I just grabbed some stuff from my drawers that I found suitable for this. It's the Hama adapter here that uh, tilts the flash. And then it's my Mikey MK320 flash. And then it is, uh, yeah, you can see the end of a Pringles tube with some packing foam. And this way I get the flash very close to the subject and uh, the diffuser is not too big and not too uh, protruding so I can uh, get in between leaves and stuff and that's very useful. end of macro season in Sweden is getting nearer. I see fewer and fewer insects each time I go out and within a couple of weeks I guess most insects will be gone. A bit sad but at the same time I feel like I have really gone out a lot this summer. I've done a lot of macro photo walks and I've done a lot of macro photo walk videos pretty much nine out of ten photo walks i do becomes a youtube video so i tend to be um, purposeful when i'm going out I always have some kind of video idea in mind uh, when i'm doing a photo walk let's see if we can find anything here on these bushes here usually we find uh, Maybe some stink bugs, we'll see. This is a very, very tiny weevil. Not sure if this lens is right for it, but let's try. So this crab spider had caught some lunch and it wasn't very cooperative, <laughs> he tried to hide with his lunch. When it comes to settings, today I am trying a very slow shutter speed uh, together with a higher ISO and a very low effect on the flash. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to get as much light from the background as possible. I want to avoid having black backgrounds as you often get in macro photography because then the whole point with this lens would be lost if you can't see anything of the background. And so that's what I'm trying these settings today. And the aperture, well, that is nothing we can control. It is what it is. So, uh, yeah.
Here we have a big juicy spider. Who is quite cooperative as well. So I saw some other macro photographers, Nicky Bay and Jon Halmeen take selfies with insects. Always wanted to try it. <laughs> Something that makes this lens even harder to use is that the working distance is very very short. It's like a few millimeters and uh, yeah, you scare a lot of insects away <laughs> when you try to shoot them. The way you focus this lens is by screwing uh, the CCTV lens in and out. Uh, and then you change the distance between the CCTV lens and the microscope lens and that makes the microscope lens focus in a different part of the projection of the CCTV lens which basically changes focus. So you can use this for landscape shots if you want to as well as macro shots. Sleeping weevil, I guess. Or was it dead? Oh, I think it was sleeping or resting. We have a daddy long leg spider here. I think we got a decent shot. I think this stink bug shot was the best one today. Uh, I think I got it pretty sharp and I love how the perspective is completely different than what you would have gotten with a regular macro lens. You would never have gotten so much of the uh, leaf that it was sitting on with a regular lens. But with this one, yeah, you can really see the insect in its surroundings. And yeah, that's pretty cool. So I call this a $25 lens because the CCTV lens is $5 and you can find a microscope lens for $20. I made a separate video about that lens and how to use that. And then you also need the two adapters of course and I will link the lenses and uh, the models for the adapters in the description and if you have a 3D printer they are pretty much free and if you don't have a 3D printer you have to get them printed somewhere and while that is not free it is usually pretty cheap uh, so you will have a very cheap wide angle high magnification macro lens and yeah, the image quality is not perfect, it is far from perfect, but it's great fun for very little money. So uh, yeah, try it. Thanks for watching this video. Remember to subscribe if you like macro photography, that is what this channel is all about. And see you soon again. This is my latest bonus video exclusively for Patreon supporters. It's a 20 minute tutorial where I teach you my best tips for capturing wildflowers. And every month I add a new bonus video to my Patreon library. It's currently 13 videos. If you become a patron of mine for $5 per month, you get access to this growing library of bonus videos. And more importantly, you can sleep better at night knowing that you ensure the continued existence of this YouTube channel. I do this full time, but I do not yet earn a full time living, so your contribution is greatly appreciated and very much needed. Go to patreon.com slash Michael to sign up. You can cancel anytime. Thank you.